Hello, welcome back art explorers. Miss Mary here. I hope you had a great summer and you're ready to do some art with me today. Today we're gonna to talk about oil pastels and we're gonna do an underwater silhouette picture with oil pastels. If you stop by the library and picked up a kit, you will find a package of oil pastels, a couple smaller pieces of paper. These were cut so you can practice with the oil pastels first. And you'll find one large piece of oil pastel paper that's going to be our final product is going on this one. You might see that I have a couple different pieces here. It's because everyone might have a slightly different color. But they're all going to work the same. And the only thing you might want from your house is um, a pencil if you want to draw first. If not, you don't need to draw anything. We're going to do it all with the oil pastels. You may want to get a big piece of paper or you could use the brown paper bag that this came in to open it up and put down on the table that you're going to be doing it because oil pastels can be a little messy. All right, before we get started on our underwater silhouette picture, I am just going to take one of the little square pieces of paper that's in there and open up your oil pastels and we can practice. Oil pastels are different than crayons. They have a bit of an oily texture and you can blend them on your paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pick a color. I'll go with red since it's not one we need for our picture so it's okay if I use it now. I'm going to make a little bit of an apple-y shape. And I'm going to fill in one side. And as I get closer to the middle, I'm going to do less and lighter and less. So it kind of fades from a lot of red to a little less, a little less, until it's at the end. Then I'm going to take orange and I'm going to start on the other side and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to do a lot of orange over here and then start to fill in where those breaks are in the red. And then just less and less until I get to the end. Now, you can kind of move it around a little bit. You can see it start to blend with the actual oil pastel stick itself. But if you have enough on there, what you can do, and this is where it gets a little messy, is take your finger and you actually can mix it right on the paper. Now, if you could see through and see little parts of the paper show through, you just might not have enough of the color on there. So you could always go through and add more over top. Now, it does start to get a little messy, but if your edges get messy, what you can do is go back in and re-clean up your edges and then we could just do a darker color background to clean it up. But remember this is just for practice and to see how the colors blend together and how much you have to have on there to blend it. And you kind of keep playing with it that way. Let's say we wanted to see how a background color would do. So I'm going to just take this and outline it and cover up the little smudges on the outside. Now, it, if I want the black and red to blend, then I use my finger and I blend those together. But if I want them to be two separate things, I don't want to blend those together. I would want to blend from that line going the other way. Thank you. 
and we can even do another color down here just to keep practicing. So I'm going to do some pink, a lot of pink, and then less, 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 less. I'm going to go out purple, a lot of purple, less, 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 less. Now, my finger has orange on it and red. So if I put it in here, it might mix with those colors depending on how much I have on my finger. So you might want a paper towel or something or just go wash your hands in between the colors or wipe it off somewhere. And then I always want to start with the lighter color first. So if I start in this purple and go this way, there's going to be a lot of purple on my finger and it might take over all of the pink. So if I'm with the pink and I move it into the purple, that's going to be better. So whatever color is stronger and darker, you want to start on that side first and mix it into the other one. And then in between here, if you don't really like what that color looks like, it might just need more oil pastel on it. So I'm just going to put some more purple on top, put some more pink on top. And again, you can mix it with the stick too, if you want or you can use your finger. All right, so you can keep practicing and keep making any pictures you want or anything like that. Those little squares are for you to practice on. Next, what you're gonna do is take one of your big pieces when you're ready and again, you are welcome to make whatever art you would like to. Today I'm talking about the underwater silhouette picture. For this, we're going to start with the background first. And all the black I did at the very end. So if you don't want to make a shark, and you want to make a fish, or a seahorse, or a turtle, you can do any creature that you want, or even a mermaid. But the first thing we're going to do is the very background. And with that, I want to take my white and I want to find where that main spot of bright sunlight is shining through. So I'm going to go right here and make a nice circle with white. Now, if you want your sunlight to be bigger, you can make it pretty big. If you want it to be a small little moonlight showing through, you can make it smaller. And then I'm gonna keep bringing this white out and out and out, less and less and less, because we're gonna mix with that. Remember, we need a good amount too. So if you can see the paper through it, you might not have enough to mix with. All right. Next is some yellow. So I, I do want the middle circle to be pretty white. So I'm gonna go out a little bit because this is kind of where I want the yellow to start. Or this is where I want the yellow to be the brightest yellow. So this is going to be my darker yellow. So that means I'm going to do a little bit of yellow going toward the middle. And I'm going to do a little yellow going out. So this is my darkest yellow. I'm even going to put a little bit more. And keep going with that circle shape. And you can kind of do dashes around in a circle because that's the water, the movement in the water. Okay, then I'm going to go back to my white. I'm going to start in the middle again. I want this very white and then I'm going to slowly go into that yellow. Now if you're not using your fingers, this is how you're going to keep going over that yellow to help mix it all up. Now, if you're gonna use your fingers, which I'll show you in a second, you still wanna do this too, because you want more 
oil pastel all around. Now, I did some practicing. I got colors on my fingers. I probably don't want to use this hand because I've got a lot of colors going on. I'm going to use my other hand because it's clean, but you could always go wash your hands in between colors too. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to keep going with the circle. If I just fill it in back and forth, it's not going to give it that movement and that shape of the water. So I'm going to go around my circle. I'm just going to check my fingers before I use them to make sure there's not a bunch of colors on them. And you do have to hold it down because I am pushing pretty hard to move that oil pastel around. And you see it starts to blend together. Now if you don't want your circle in the middle to be as bright white, oh see, where did that red come from? I'm just going to blend it out a little bit. And if that happens to you too, don't worry because we're going to put a sea creature somewhere. So if there is a smudge that happens, you just put a silhouette of something on top of it. So I'm not going to worry too much about that because that's probably where something's going to go. But if it really starts happening to you, remember just go wash your hands and get all those colors off. You won't be able to just use water because it's oil based and you're going to have to use a little bit of soap. Alright, so that's looking pretty mixed up and blend it. So I'm going to take my white again because the more layers I do, it's going to add more of that color and something for us to blend with. So it does, and something to blend with. So it doesn't hurt to add more. Now I'm adding more white to the part where I have the little bit of yellow because that's the next thing I'm going to blend. So for mine, my yellow and my blue are going to mix and make it green anyway. But I'm actually going to take my light green and add a little bit of light green in where there's a little bit of yellow to kind of start making that mixture. If you don't want any green right there, that's okay. We're going to mix it in pretty good anyway. And then there's going to be blue next. But I'm just doing a little bit. Oh, also remember you can turn your picture if you can't reach a part of it. And if it makes it easier to get to that circle. I'm only doing a little bit of green and I'm just going to blend that with the yellow and the white. Same, a little black. I don't know where, you never know where some of it comes from. But again, I'm not going to worry too much about it because I think I'm going to put a creature there anyway. Okay, I made it all the way around. Next, you guessed it, I'm gonna take my white again. Before I bring in all that blue, I'm gonna go back over where that green is and go a little outside the green because I want something to mix that light blue with. So I'm starting a little bit in, going in through the green part and going a little bit outside the green part. And I promise we're going to go through a lot of white. Okay, now I'm going to get my light blue. I want to start right outside where I was just putting that white. And I'm going to make it pretty blue. 
lots of blue. And then as I get closer to that white, I'm going to do less and less and let it mix in with the white. And then I'm even going to bring it in a little bit and let it mix with the green. We are going to go in with one more darker blue, so don't feel like you have to fill up the whole thing. But I'm leaving areas with not a ton of this light blue, so we can put some of that over it. Okay, so we got this blue in there. We'll do a little more here and there, so we have something to mix with. And then grab our white and I'm gonna start a little bit closer to where the blue is and bring it down. If you're not using your fingers, you could just do it this way. Now I'm going back and forth with my white to mix in that light blue and white, mix in where the light blue reaches the green. But I'm not gonna go down into the yellow right now because I got a lot of blue on here and it's gonna mix together. So I'm only going over where the light blue is, going through where those white parts are that I wanted to mix with the light blue, and I'm going into where the green was. <clears throat> and I'm still trying to keep that circle shape all the way around. And again, if you're not using your finger and you're going over it, you could see it mixing and blending together. All right, so. If you are using your finger, again, make sure you're at a clean spot because this, this finger has a lot of yellow on it. So if I put it down here, it's gonna make it green. So I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna start over here and mix it into the white. Yeah, I'm gonna go into the green a little bit, but I don't wanna go too far into that yellow. And then I'm just gonna go over all the areas I just put oil pastel on. All the way around. Now I'm going over it until I don't see the pattern of the paper. So see this part's not blended, this part's blended, and sometimes even if you blend a part, if there's not enough oil pastel, it's not going to fill in all the little texture crevices of the paper. So you might have to put more oil pastel on different parts if you need it. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna get the dark blue and add it to the very corners, nice and dark, and then a little bit in through here. So this one I'm gonna go corner at a time. I'm gonna blend that in. and see how that looks. You could always add a little more. If you like it darker, you could do not as much if you like it lighter blue. So that's good for that corner. I'm gonna add a little bit to this corner and a little here and there to blend it in. And then I got this whole bottom part. Okay. This is a good point where if you would like to pause the video and keep working on your background, you can totally do that. You can go through however many times you want and add those layers. You can go back through with the white again. You could add some yellow here or there. You can keep going in with the blue. Remember, the more you mix it, there will be a point where all the colors are gonna mix together so you do have to stop so you get some of, so you still see all the colors. Because if I keep mixing, keep mixing, keep mixing, it's really easy for everything to become all dark blue or all light blue. But I want to see some white parts. I want to see light blue. I want to see dark blue. I want to see yellow. I want to see white. So you want to blend it enough where it mix, it blends the edges, but not enough to really mix it all together and become one color. All right, now that we have our background in a place where we like it, 
We are going to add the dark around the outside first and then any amount of sea creatures you want in the center. That, that will be up to you. I did a shark for the example, but you can do fish, you could do seahorses, you can do dolphin, turtle, mermaid, scuba diver, anything you want. Now that we're introducing black to this picture, I, we need to be extra careful because we don't want to smear it everywhere. So I've got, you could take a piece of paper or a piece of the bag that you, um, that all the kit came in, just something to put your hand on when you draw so you're not smearing any of your other work. You can find your black oil pastel and I made just squiggly lines around the outside as my rocks and filled them in with the black and then made lines that came out like coral and seaweed. They're just, you know, plant life that you would find underneath. You don't have to follow me exactly with this part. You can make it any way you want. I've also seen this picture done when there's only rocks at the bottom and not all the way around. So if you like that look better, you can just do them on the bottom. So I'm going to start with the bottom first. So I'm going to take my black. Oh, and also the bigger you make your rocks, the less room you're going to have for the sea creature silhouette. So if you want to make bigger rocks and only a small animal, you can do that. Or big rocks and no animal, if you like that, you can do it. Or if you keep the rocks closer to the edge, then you'll have plenty of room to make something in the middle. So I did a squiggly line and then I'm going to fill it in. if you like just the rocks at the bottom you could do rocks at the bottom and stop there I'm going to add some of the plant life and if you go nice and light you can make your lines nice and skinny If you are continuing around, you can remember you can keep turning it so you don't have to touch the middle and make your rocks go all the way around. And then you can do your plant life all the way around. Now, I've got black on my fingers. I gotta be extra careful anywhere I touch now. So unless I'm touching the black, I'm gonna try not to touch my piece. This piece of paper, you could always Check, make sure there's nothing on the back before you set it down, and then you can color. There are a couple ways you could go about this next part. You can take your oil pastel, use your little extra piece of paper, and just start coloring in whatever creature you want. In your kit, there's also a half sheet of black paper. If you're a little too scared to do the silhouette in the oil pastel, you would take the black paper, draw with a pencil, cut it out, and glue on your silhouette. That way you have a couple of chances to try it. You could see what, where you want to put it, things like that. So you are welcome to do that, and there's going to be a half sheet of black paper in there for you to do that if you would like to. If you're going to do it with the oil pastel, the main thing you have to remember is start smaller could always make the shapes bigger, but you can't ever go backwards. So if you start with one big old creature in the middle and it starts to get too big and doesn't fit, there's not much we can do. Um, you could always just 
this, use this as a practice, get a new piece of paper and try it again. That's also not bad to have to do. But if we like this one, you just wanna make sure to start small and you can always go bigger. When I was making this one, I first tried to make a turtle and I didn't really like how the turtle was coming out. So I turned it into a shark shape. And the only way I was able to do that was because I started a small turtle. So it was like right in here. And just the shapes weren't really working. So I ended up turning into a shark. Now, if I made the turtle really big, I would not have been able to change gears like that. So first you gotta figure out what creature you wanna do and how you wanna do it. If you're gonna do it with the oil pastels, again, make sure you have some sort of scratch piece of paper or something that you could put your rest your hand on. I might just go with the shark again and when you're doing silhouettes, you really just wanna look at the shapes you're trying to make. I don't need to think about a shark and try to draw a shark might feel harder. But if I think of the shapes that I see, that's gonna make it a lot easier because we're gonna fill it all in with black anyway. So I can start with kind of an oval shape for the body and then kind of maybe another oval shape here and then when you connect it you get the curves the tail is very triangle triangle these are kind of triangly so just think about it as far as shapes go and that goes for any animal you're gonna try to make again if you're gonna do the black paper you don't have to do any more with the oil pastels you could switch to a pencil draw it first cut it out and then just glue it on if you're gonna draw this is I'm gonna to try to do a shark. So, got my old pastel. I'm gonna start with that oval shape like we were just talking about. Not too big, so I have room. So that's the main part of the body. Now I'm gonna do another oval shape up here. That's where the tail is gonna start heading that way. And then I'm gonna connect the two. So I'm gonna move my paper over here. This is the tail gonna come around this way and then the tail this way that have to come out a little bit further because I made it this oval bigger and then this way and then I'm gonna make that nice shark nose right there okay I'm not gonna worry about my edges too much because if I keep going over the same line it might just keep getting bigger and bigger and I know that there's gonna be a fin right there anyway so I'm not gonna worry about that little line that went out because something's gonna go over that okay now that we got that, I'm gonna make the tail a little bit skinnier. And then we talked about those triangles for the fin. Okay. Maybe the little tiny triangles back here. Then he's got the big fin on the side. Good. And then the one at the top. Once you start getting the shape that you like, I'm going to start filling it in so I can see it a little bit clearer. Don't forget to keep moving your paper around as you're filling it in. Now if you get little bits of that charcoal that fall off as you're coloring, don't use your hand and smear it. I always like to set it up and tap it so it falls off instead of smearing with my hand. Let's see, this fin's a little bit bigger, so I actually might come in and make this top one slightly bigger so they're a little bit closer to the same size. 
And remember, it's always easier to go bigger and we really aren't able to go any smaller. So I might even make the face a little bigger now that I know that the fins are a little bigger. And you're definitely welcome to make different creatures and more of them if you want to put a couple fish or a couple sharks. You are the artist of your picture. Okay, so there we go. All right, art explorers, I hope you had fun with oil pastels today and learned how they blend and being able to create beautiful works of art. If you do finish a picture, if you want to show me, I would love to see them. You can either take a picture and email it to the library or send it to us with our Facebook. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.